Hi everybody. In this video we're going to learn how to use that GUI. That GUI is a graphic user interface that allows you to change variables on the fly. That way you can see what they look like before you hard code them. So let's see how this works. I'm using three module JS so I'm looking for the that GUI module. Google that GUI GitHub. And here it is here. Click on that and go into the build folder and here it is here dat gui module js click on that and click on raw and here's the file so i'm going to right click and save as and hit save okay now it's downloaded now i'm going to put it in my code editor directory so i'm just going to drag and drop it into my modules folder and now i'm going to import it in my script tag with my modules so in my script type equals module i'm going to put import gui gui from and the path where you save the dat GUI module in your directory. If you're using 3JS without modules, you can get dat GUI this way. Just Google dat GUI CDN and you can use the online version of it. And here it is here, just click that. And here's two versions, dat GUI min or dat GUI JS. I'm going to use the minified version and I'm going to click on this middle icon, the copy script tag. I'm going to click that and then in my head section of my HTML file, I'm going to paste it in there. And I won't need to write an import statement in my other script tag here because this, this script tag will take care of it if you're not using modules. So in my scene, I have three objects. I have a directional light, I have a plane, and I have a cube. So now let's create a new instance of the dat GUI interface. If you're using modules, you would create a new GUI like this, const GUI, you can call it whatever you want, is equal to new GUI. If you are not using modules, then it's const GUI, or whatever you want to call it, is equal to new dat.gui. After we've created our dat.gui interface, we're going to link properties of the cube to our sliders in the GUI. So now we're going to add a slider for the cube exposition property. So how do we do this? We're going to name the object, and then the property that we're using, and the minimum value that we want, and the maximum value that we want, and then the step. The step means when you move the slider a little bit, how much is that value going to change? And then the GUI label. The label is what is written here for each thing that we can control. I'm going GUI.add. GUI is what I call this new GUI uh, instance. The object is the cube position and the property is the X position. So I have to put that in quotation marks. And the minimum value, so I want to change it from minus 50 to plus 50. So minus 50 will be the minimum number, 50 will be the maximum number. And how much can I change it by at a time? I can change it by 0.1. Now you can change this whatever you want. If you want to change things faster, you can use a higher number. That means each time you move the slider just a little bit, now it will move five meters. And what label do I want? If I don't add a label to the GUI interface, it'll use whatever is in quotation marks here. So now I've added a scale slider, and you can do the same thing for rotation. The object is cube rotation, the property is x, the minimum is zero, the maximum is math.pi times two. That's because we're using radians, and math.pi times two is 180 degrees times 2, which is 360 degrees. And I'm labeling it X rotation in the GUI interface. What happens if it's just a true or false thing? So for Boolean properties, we could start the same way. We're going to add a slider to GUI, and the object will be the cube material. What property of the material are we going to change? It's going to be the wireframe. So I put that in quotes. And wireframe is true or false true or false property values show up as a checkbox instead of a slider so you can check it for true or you can uncheck it for false. And notice the name is wireframe and that's what it's called here in quotes and that's what it's using. Now you'll notice that it has RGB here and a little arrow and if I click this arrow a new folder will open up. So you can separate items into folders to organize your controls. Here so we're going to put these colors in a folder here. And notice in this black box here it says RGB. That is the name of the folder. So the name of the folder here, I'm adding it to the graphic user interface and I'm putting that in the object folder RGB. Now I'm going to add the color controls into folder RGB. So instead of GUI.add, I'm using the folder.add. So folder RGB.add 
and I'm adding the object so cube.material.color and the color has an R value between 0 and 1 and a green value between 0 and 1 and a blue value between 0 and 1. So the property is going to be R in quotation marks or G in quotation marks or blue in quotation marks for red, green, blue and the minimum value will be 0 and the maximum value will be 1 and I'm naming each one red, green, and blue. And when you slide them, it will change the red amount, the green amount, or the blue amount. But it doesn't show a picture in here. There is a way that we can get a color box in here so we can slide the color and look at it at the same time. So let's do that. So here I've made a variable. I have a property called color and its value is an array. The first value is the red value, so that's zero, and the green value is 255, and then the blue value is 255. So red, green, blue, and the numbers will range from zero to 255. And now I'm going to make it so that when you pick a color in this color box that it will automatically change the color of the cube. So I'm adding this color palette to my RGB folder. So folder RGB add color. I'm adding this palette object. What am I controlling? What, what's the property? It's the color. And then I'm going to run a function whenever it changes so I can recolor the cube. On change, so whenever it detects a change in this color, whenever you drag this thing and change the color, it's going to run this function. So function, and I'm passing in the value, this RGB value here, I'm going to pass that into the cube. So here I have cube.material.color.r, so I'm going to change the red value of the cube by its value, so from 0 to 255, whatever number that is, I have to change it to a number from 0 to 1. So how do I do that? I'm going to divide it by 255. If the number is 255, and I divide it by 255, that'll be 1. That's the highest number I can get. And if the number is 0, 0 divided by 255 is 0. That will be the lowest number I can get. And then any other color will be a number in between. So that's what I'm doing. I'm dividing the red value by 255. I'm dividing the green value by 255. And I'm dividing the blue value by 255 to get the red, green, and blue values from 0 to 1. And it will change the color of the cube. So I like this color box. That way you can see the color and try it out and see if you like it. All the sliders don't have to control the same object. You can control every object in your scene in the same uh, GUI interface.